It's not easy being a Christian when life is hard, right? Fiddle dee That will require a tetanus shot. I'm not going to swear, but I am going to kick this doghouse down! I mean, have you ever thought if I just weren't a Christian right now, this situation would be much easier to get through? But seriously, maybe you thought, you know, if I could just compromise my character just a little bit, then maybe I could relieve some of this tension. Are you sure about that? Maybe, maybe if I was dishonest about this, or maybe if I changed my morals slightly, that it, maybe it'd be easier to get through that. Huh? But here's the thing, you're fooling no one because your Christianity is only as strong as your character. So join me today and I will show you how to live a no compromise Christian life on Church Door. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, does it really make a sound? Hi. Now, philosophers have been wrestling with this question for ages, dancing around with the idea of perception. And in our modern relativistic culture, many have wrestled with another idea of perception. Like, if it doesn't hurt someone, is it really wrong? Mm. Many have fallen into this temptation of thinking if no one sees the sin, then maybe the sin just doesn't exist. But here's the problem that most people are missing with this assertion. When you have secret, compromised character and then you add the pressures of this life, it most certainly equals collapse. Just think about all the celebrity pastors, even in the last few months that have been highlighted. I mean, Tony Evans. Robert Morris, the pastor of Gateway Church, and also the expose of Carl Lentz coming out from ABC News. These Christian leaders, amongst many others, show us that compromised character leads to a collapsing Christian walk. Think about it. The scriptures tell us this again and again. To anyone who thinks they are standing strong, they should be careful that they don't fall. Or God rebuking the Israelites by saying, be sure your sin will find you out. So I'm gonna to call today's message, How to Live a No Compromise Christian Life. And if I were to add a tag to this message, it would be even when things are hard, because here's the truth, when the pressures of life are added in, it becomes increasingly easy to give in to temptation. Sometimes that compromise brings us comfort or distraction, or maybe even relief, yet we haven't fully realized the long-term effect of that compromise. As we continue in our study of Philippians chapter four, we can gain a lot from Paul's wisdom as he writes to his brothers and sisters in Philippi from prison. We must remember that Paul's imprisonment would have looked nothing like what we think of prison today. If you were to go into a jail in the United States in 2024, you'll receive three meals a day. You, you might have access to education, books, and even television. You might be provided with clothing, showers, and even medical care. This was not the case for Paul. He didn't have any of these luxuries, yet he had to fully rely on the generosity of the church and ultimately provision from the Lord. Therefore, he would have had every reason to make excuses for himself to compromise his faith. Yet he didn't. So the question is, how did he do it? Hmm. Let's look in here in Philippians chapter four. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and have seen in me practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any, in every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So here are three things that we can learn from Paul if we wanna live a no compromise Christian life. First, cultivate the right mindset. Second, look to the right mentors. And third, grow into maturity. So that's three M's, mindset, mentors, and maturity. 
These items sit right in the center of Paul's thinking as he was navigating this very difficult season. He starts by saying, put your mind on this, what is true, pure, honorable, lovely, commendable, excellent, and worthy of praise. In other words, get your head out of the gutter and saturate it with good. To be more specific here, we should sing these good things over our lives. This list of items actually is reflective of a psalm, something that Paul would have sung throughout his life as a devoted man of God's word. Look at these parallels in Psalm 19, seven through nine. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The degrees of the Lord are firm and all of them are righteous. Did you see the overlap? There is something unique about the gift of music and song that God has given us. Music cements things into our mind unlike any other thing. Don't believe me? Well, let's test that out. Can you finish this song? I'm gonna give you up, gonna let yep, you're welcome. You'll be singing this for the rest of the day. I can almost guarantee it. If we wanna change our mindset, think about the songs that we are letting be sung over our lives. You see, Paul was reminding his friends that when we sing the good things of God, that cultivates the right mindset. He then encourages them to look to the right mentors, exemplars who have modeled these mindsets for us. Paul, of course, uses himself as that example saying, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me practice these things. So whether you wanna believe it or not, the old adages are true. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Or bad company corrupts good character. Who we decide to spend our time with will affect the output of our life. And as much as bad influences will take us down the wrong path, the opposite is also true. There's nothing greater than the wisdom of a worthy mentor. Someone who's walked the path before us. They, they see things that we don't and they can save us from the pitfalls that they've experienced. So if your circumstances always lead you into places of compromise, maybe it's time to reconsider the company that you keep. Then Paul reminds his friends to grow in maturity. And there's only one way to do this, which is when the going gets tough, we take on the tough. Paul shows this by saying, I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content in any and every circumstance. I have learned that the secrets of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This, my friends, is maturity. And maturity comes from experience, both the good and the bad. The Greek that Paul uses in this phrase, learning the secret, is actually language that would have been used in the initiation of people into pagan mystic cults of his time. In other words, we are initiated into maturity by pressing into our circumstances. Because the more we push in, the more we will realize that it is the power of God that strengthens us through all things. I mean, have you ever been in a place in your life that there's nothing you can do to change your circumstances? And the only thing that's gonna break through is if God brings a miracle. Maybe it's a child of yours who's adopted a destructive lifestyle or maybe a diagnosis of a terminal disease. But those of us who have walked with God into maturity know it's not me, it's God who gets me through. And we only learn that through pressing into our experience. And if he's done it once, we can always know that he can do it again. If you need a breakthrough of God in your life, we have a team of people here that wanna walk with you today. You can reach us down in the chat or you can text prayer to the number that you see coming up on the screen right now. Our prayer for you this week is that you would walk with the Lord no matter what season you find yourself in, that you would allow him to cultivate the right mindsets in you. Bring mentors into your life that can love on you and care for you, and that through pushing into these that we would grow in our maturity with him and that he will be brought glory. Hey, do me a quick favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's gonna come directly to you. Or you can go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single cent that comes in goes right back out to help people just like you 
take their next step with Jesus. Hey, if you were encouraged by this video, we have another video that we really think you're gonna love. Go ahead and hit that button right in the center of the screen.